Greetings, fanboys and fangirls. Welcome to Chapter 3 for a look back at the Justice League merchandise push when it originally released at the end of 2017. In our first two chapters, which if you've not checked those out, be sure to check them out in the links in the description below, we looked at the original Mattel basic line of action figures, then we looked at the Mattel multiverse line of figures for slightly older collectors, and now we'll be having a look at the range of Lego products. So you may notice here that with my setup, I have uh, the Justice League on a beach here, and that's just for fun, purely for color. That is one of the beach pieces of the Pirates of Barracuda Bay Lego Ideas set. Just, uh, just something for fun. But you can see here that we have three different sets, and we'll be going over each one of them individually. One of them was the Aquaman set. It was referred to as the Battle of Atlantis which is really funny considering now that we've seen the Snyder cut of the film, that battle is mostly non-existent in the theatrical cut. So that was definitely a purely Snyder cut set, probably the least successful of all the sets. And it's really no wonder why looking back now, uh, since that battle didn't really occur in the film. The other set that came out was the Nightcrawler Lego set. No, we're not referring to the X-Man, but Batman's vehicle from the tunnel sequence, which was still largely intact in the theatrical film. And finally, they released Batman's largest vehicle in the film, the Flying Fox Carrier, and it also included a Batmobile. So we'll be going over each of these sets from smallest to largest, starting with the Battle of Atlantis set. So here we have set number 76085. This is the Battle of Atlantis. As you can see, this is the only set in the range that is a terrain build. Everything else is vehicle-based in the range. So looking at what we have here, let's start with our minifigure selection. You can see that we have two Atlantean soldiers that appear to be exactly the same. We have the yellow variation of Parademon, and we have Jason Momoa Aquaman himself from the film. Looking first at Aquaman, you can see that really he is a fairly accurate representation of the film. You can see that Aquaman's gold armor is uh, very much preserved here, as well as the rather ornate printing that represents all the detailing on the legs. Aquaman's hairpiece is also fairly impressive, as I think that this is the first time it was ever used. I think it was created for him. And I really like the blonde highlights that were put in there, and not necessarily something that I expected LEGO to do to go the extra mile. Also, there is alternate face printing. You have just a standard face, but I definitely like the more gnarly version with the lighter colored eyes. It puts me much more in the mind of Aquaman's kind of maverick nature in the film. You can also see that he has a really cool trident piece. We have a lightsaber hilt on the bottom there to kind of give it a little more detail. You can also see that he has a couple of these pieces, which are supposed to be like water effects pieces. Now, this is where it gets into more of the gamification of this set. At this time in LEGO's history, Many of their sets had some kind of um, a play feature that had to do with knocking things over. And it's something that they still do every now and then, but it's certainly not as prominent as it was. So one way that this was accomplished is you would take this and just push it, and it would launch off of Aquaman's hand because he's just holding the effect. So if you take this and push it, it launches off into the abyss so that a dog or cat can chew it up or you can vacuum it up later. Uh, I suppose the idea was you might knock down this parademon. Uh, I certainly didn't succeed in that attempt, but I suppose it was their way of introducing more play features, and it's certainly something I didn't mind because it's a pretty cool effect. Next up, we'll be looking at the Atlantean soldiers. These guys are interesting, um, especially because at the time of the set's release, these guys hardly feature at all in the theatrical version of the movie, and they're very prominent, of course, in the Snyder cut of the film. So uh, it was kind of funny because Mattel also did uh, basic figures of these guys in their armor. So this was definitely a remnant of that original Snyder Cut uh, idea. And you can see there's a couple of cool things going on. For one thing, I really like all of the gold flaked printing there on the chest and the legs. It's very ornate and probably much more detailed than it needed to be. Same for the back. The new helmet pieces are very nice, and I really like these. They remind me a lot of Ocean Master. Taking this off, you can see that he just has one of these standard Lego uh, faces, probably a reused print. On the back, we have a happy face. I always like the more emoting faces on my minifigs, so that's what I'm keeping on. Uh, the mask lines up pretty well. I think I like to keep it up just a little. I think it looks a little better if you put it down too low. It covers the mouth, makes him look kind of like he has a mustache in certain shadow. 
Uh, the guns are kind of interesting because they're like spear guns. They don't really have an action feature. They're just made to look interesting. So nothing really launches out of them, which surprises me. I would have imagined they would have done a stud shooter at this time because they were very much into that. You get, from what I can tell anyway, an exact duplicate of that figure. So this is kind of like their army building set of the wave. I do feel like that if it was going to be an army building set, people would have been much more interested in army building parademons than Atlantean soldiers, as we'll get into in just a moment. Here we have our yellow parademon variant. Now, this version of the parademon, I, I really can't say if it's featured very prominently in the film or not. Uh, if it was, I certainly didn't notice a very bright yellow looking parademon with uh, blue arms, but I will say the printing is just out of this world. Uh, this, even by 2021 standards when this video is being recorded, this printing, uh, man, it's as ornate as you can get. And uh, it's really some of their, their finest work when it comes to printing that I've seen. So it's kind of unbelievable that they put this much detail into it. Uh, that's why it would have been even nicer to have had, you know, a couple of these guys. There is a slight build to get these wings on. You just put this on and it kind of fits over a hole in the back. See 2017 Lego. These are transparent. They're just kind of like plastic pieces. I was always sort of amused that these things came on like a big transparency sheet like this. And you just kind of punched it out. And it doesn't have any problems with ripping or anything because they're uh, perforated correctly, of course. And there's also a smaller set of wings that you can put on them instead. The instructions shown you using the big set, so I just went with that. But this is here in case you prefer it to be a little less dramatic than this huge wing spread here. So now that we've talked about minifigures, let's talk a little bit about the build. And I actually like the set quite a bit. I think it does a good job of giving you kind of the general atmosphere of those Atlantean outposts. Of course, in the film, it's not meant to be the actual city of Atlantis, as we would see that in the Aquaman film. But instead, just kind of outposts, kind of like a lookout towers for them. And I think this does a pretty good job for, I believe it was a $20 set, of kind of replicating that strange architecture and it almost looked kind of dilapidated, kind of torn down. I like the seaweed details and it almost looked like Aquaman's belt buckle up here. They're using the old uh, cockpit piece up there. So I think that's a cool little detail, whether it was intentional or not. You can see we do have some sticker detail over here on these columns. And uh, there's a few different uh, places where stickers are utilized right over here and right over here as well. And uh, they're not very intrusive and they're not very difficult to get right. So uh, I didn't have too much difficulty with them, but you know, just like everybody else, when it comes to stickers on Lego, you kind of wish it was printed. There's also a little bit of articulation here as you can kind of open this up and close it. And it, there's just some joints on the sides that allow you to do that. From the other side, it's not quite as pretty. You can see that there's no sticker detail or anything like that. And there's more mechanical bits and kind of mismatched things that show up up here, but that's because of the action feature. And in the center of this courtyard, as I would call it, you kind of have this. This is one of the mother boxes and it even comes with a little pedestal and you can see it's just kind of uh, tabbed on there. And it has this great printed piece on the top and it's not a sticker at all. It is the Atlantean mother box. And of course, in the Snyder Cut, we see that these things pop open and the actual mother boxes are inside, but this is the container that the Atlanteans made for it. I really like this thing. And as you'll see, as we go through all three sets, there's three sets because each one comes with a mother box, so it replicates the three mother boxes in the film. But this pedestal isn't the only way that you can display this. You can actually put it on this little brick built shelf up here. And who knows if this will work or not. <laughs> but you take this transparent jumper piece which is something that Lego was including in so many sets at this time, because like I said, there was kind of a gamification going on between their stud shooters that the Parademon has and just launching figures. They really went for that. So you plug them in, and a lot of times this was very ill-fitting for minifig feet, so I don't really know what the deal was there. And the deal was you would press this up, and when you would release it, he would fly off, and sometimes it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't. So we're going to attempt to make that work right here. Let's see if we can launch him. Nope, 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 no. So you can see that the legs are too secured for him to actually launch off, which was kind of a problem with these launchers. And uh, you can see it's just too tightly fit in. So if you take it off and it's very difficult to get off. So I'm not really sure what the intention was uh, there uh, because they probably should have known through playtesting that those things weren't going to pop off so easily. So instead, I'm just going to balance him on there and it's very difficult because he just falls off. 
and he kind of jumps. Almost. I'm going to have to get him very close. There we go. So you can see that you hit this thing, it kind of goes back, and the mother box pops out. And that's supposed to simulate in the film when the parademons and Steppenwolf steal the mother box. I could have done without the action feature. I didn't really care about the jumpers uh, even back then. But, you know, it's, it's just something you can do. So overall, for the price, I really do feel like that $20 gets you a pretty nice little set with a very competent little diorama and four minifigures, three of which would be considered army builders. It's quite obvious that their intention was for you to buy multiples of these. And I'm sure if you bought multiples of these dioramas, you could then kind of assemble them into more of a hexagon or something of that nature, or an octagon of sorts. And uh, you could have kind of had a whole area that would have made up kind of more of that Atlantean outpost that we saw in the film. So overall, I, I really like this one. And next up, we have the mid-range set for the theme. And it is set number 76086, which is the Nightcrawler Tunnel Attack. Really, this was the first set that I bought uh, when I was hunting for the theme because the price I felt was right. It was $50 for a substantial vehicle and for minifigures, and also because I really enjoyed the tunnel sequence in the theatrical film, despite, you know, the obvious flaws of that version of the movie. And of course, um, going back, it's now obvious why I enjoyed it so much, because it appears to be the one that was left the most intact out of all of the major action sequences. Of course, it's made better by the Snyder Cut substantially, like everything else in the film. So let's go ahead and have a look at why this set appealed to me so much. First of all, we'll be looking at the minifigures. We do have a really terrific selection of them, one of which is Batman. Now, there is another Batman in this theme. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't find a way to work Batman into the Atlantean battle set there. But uh, this is the standard Batman in the film, the one that's kind of the regular costume that he wears, not the armor that he wears at the end of the movie, the tactical suit. This is the regular one. And I think that this is a very overlooked minifig particularly because of the exquisite printing. And now have a look at this. You can only see it when the light catches it just right, but you have all of that silver mesh over the suit, which is so accurate to the film. Uh, the printing itself and the design and everything is actually quite a bit more accurate in spirit and in design to the movie than many of the figures were. And uh, I have to give them a whole lot of props on that. Of course, on the back, that printing continues, so it's even more impressive. You also have printing on the legs to make it match, even though the legs are just molded in black. It's a shame that they couldn't get the printing onto the arms to match the bodysuit and the legs, but really, those were the most important areas for it to be featured. You can also see that we have Batman's standard white eyes, even though in the film that is not how he appears, and of course he has the funny headband. We have a neutral face on the back, and on both, I'm glad that he has the little printed stubble on there. Of course, Batman's skin is a tad dark. Um, however, this is more symptomatic of it being printed on black plastic. So that tends to be the case with a lot of their Batman figures. It looks like Batman maybe has gotten a tan while he was out, you know, patrolling in the day, as you do. Great minifig and one of my favorites. We also have a couple of parademons here, and these are the more traditional green versions that you see in the film. Each one of them has a stud shooter, and they're exactly alike. Just like with the previous parademon, I will compliment the exquisite amount of printing that is going on here. And that, of course, extends to the uh, kind of plasticky wings back here. On the back, we have more printing, and it looks terrific. And there is, of course, another here, as this set can be used to build your Parademon army. Finally, the minifigure that I would say most people bought this set for was the Ezra Miller Flash minifigure. And I have to say, this one is quite nice. Just like Batman, there is an incredible amount of printing on the chest and also on the legs. And you even have all of those little, like, wire uh, pieces that were holding the suit together in the movie. The helmet itself doesn't have any printing, but it is a brand new sculpt made to replicate the unique shape of the helmet in the film. You even have the gold kind of ears, and on the back you have more printing. You can take the helmet off, and you just have Barry here without the helmet. The flesh tone works a lot better printed on this uh, kind of burgundy plastic. On the back you have a regular face, but I always go with the more extreme version of whatever expression. And you can see that if you put it all the way down, it looks a little strange, so I always like to have it up just a little bit. I think that usually the masks look a little bit better and are probably designed to give you a little bit of leeway there. 
Just like Aquaman, he comes with the uh, funny water effect pieces, but here they're more meant to simulate the speed force as he runs, and I think that they look really nice, actually. And I think Lego was smart to double dip on that because I think that it fits for either one. But you can actually press these and they'll launch off. So that's always a neat little effect. The set also includes the mother box of man in the film, which is appropriate, considering that in this scene, that is what Steppenwolf is trying to acquire by interrogating all of the scientists, including si Silas Stone. I really like the printing on this. So this was a major draw of collecting all these sets so that you, just like Steppenwolf, could unite the mother boxes. All right, and we will get the minifigs out of the way and show you the main event of the set. And just as Batman says in the film, he needs the Nightcrawler. And this thing is really uh, quite beautiful. I really loved the Nightcrawler and thought that it was one of the most unique bat vehicles I had seen on film or in any other medium in quite some time. And I was always fascinated by this thing. You can see that there's all this terrific detail on the sides. And that includes these little printed pieces that are like uh, almost like little silver accents for these gears here. I like those quite a bit. On the front, you can see that we have all of this cool detail with a decal on the front to simulate the little headlights and things. There's kind of a cool assemblage of lots of different grays and light grays and blacks and even a little sand color in there, which is a little distracting. But as sometimes Lego builds do, it's a little strange. So up here we have a bat logo, which is funny, and two little floodlights up here. We have these huge uh, stud shooters, which I actually think look pretty aggressive and nice. We have a transparent red cockpit. You open it up, you have a very bizarre cockpit area to look at. And there's just a couple of decals there. Other than that, there's really nothing else to the cockpit, but still a neat addition that they put something there. On the back, we can see that there's storage for Batman's two gadgets he includes, his Batarang and his grapnel launcher. So I actually think that was pretty considerate. On the side, it's very much like the other. And from the back, you can see that when you twist these knobs, these studs shoot out, kind of give kind of a rapid fire effect to the thing. And it rolls really well. You can hear that satisfying grip that it gets on the ground. So works really well. This thing has quite a bit of articulation. They're all featured right here and these cool kind of Technic joints. Bring it up like that, this one. And you can just have the back wheels going while the front kind of stay up. Or you can bring the back and the other back. And then you have kind of the spider-ish configuration where Batman and Cyborg both kind of use it to climb up and down the uh, silo of the tower and the tunnels. So I think that is really cool. Minifigs can of course fit in the cockpit and you can put Batman and of course Cyborg, who we'll get into later, uh, right in the cockpit. And you can see Batman is a perfect fit and it looks great and really completes the look of the set once you have him in there. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces from the entire line. And I definitely think Lego was smart to make this their kind of mid-sized build because just the design of the Nightcrawler, the Flash minifigs, the Parademons, the Batman that you get, you can only get in this set. I really think this was a well-conceived set and a very well-executed one as well. And I do remember this being the most popular of the sets and definitely the one that stuck around the very least amount of time. So absolutely terrific. Love the Nightcrawler Tunnel Attack set. Here we have set number 76087, and this is the Flying Fox. So when Lego is serious about doing a movie theme the right way, then they'll do a huge kind of uh, big impression set that is out at retail locations. And I would definitely say that the set before you is that big impression retail set. This set retailed for $130 and was by far the most expensive and intricate set that you could get from the theme. Of course, when it comes to figural representation, this set was simply unbeatable. And for $130, which was over double what the Nightcrawler Tunnel set was, then it should be. You can see that we have the green parademon, the yellow parademon, and then we actually get four members of the Justice League and one set which I always thought was very impressive. You can also see that we get this huge brick-built Steppenwolf figure who is absolutely gigantic. As a matter of fact, he might be slightly too large in scale. Let's go ahead and look at our minifig selection. You can see that we have Superman here, and this is, of course, uh, in the theatrical cut, Superman wears his traditional costume, and I always really like the Superman minifig. However, the biggest problem is the lack of dual molding or the lack of any kind of leg prints, meaning that Superman is bootless. So this always bothered me and definitely ended up making it 
one of the weaker minifigures in this range, and it always shocked me that LEGO wasn't willing to go the slight extra mile of giving Superman his boots. Also, you can see that he has a really nice cloth cape. It's not one of the uh, kind of cardboard capes that they have for some of the lines around this time. And around this time, they were switching back to more of a fabric, high quality uh, woven style. But the way that it bunches under Superman's chin is a little aesthetically unpleasing. So that is one thing that it seems like it's a little too thick there. On the back, you can see that if we lift this up, you have Superman's angry eyes, as Miss Potato Head always said, Toy Story 2. Uh, I do like the minifigure, but the lack of leg printing really let this one down. But don't worry if you were worried about leg printing, every other figure in this set will certainly uh, tickle your fancy. Because here we have Batman in his tactical armor from the end of Justice League. And this is some very, very intricate printing for a Lego minifigure. On the back, that same intricate printing continues and they didn't even have to. And once again, we have the high quality cape. The bunching isn't as noticeable here for Batman because it is a black cape, so it's not too much of a problem. I really like all of the straps on the armor. I think that is terrific. I also thought it was a pretty good uh, little detail here that they include silver on Batman's eyes instead of white. That's of course to simulate Batman's goggles. If we go around to the back, you can see it's a more dramatic face, which would definitely be more in line with Batman's emotions during this uh, part of the film. I also like, of course, the uh, subtle stubble, subtle stubble, yeah, that's, that sounds right, right there on the face. I like that. I do think that they should have went the extra mile and actually had uh, some a goggle headpiece for Batman. And then they should have had one made for the uh, Nightmare version of Batman that they could have reused here. But I think overall it does a pretty good job of simulating the goggles. It's just something that they could have done a little better with, I feel. We have now Cyborg here. And Cyborg is a very impressive minifig for a lot of different reasons. For one thing, he has a completely uniquely molded head. This is all uh, on his hair. So you take this off and it's like he's got a big hair piece with all the cyborg parts. You take this off and you're left with a Vic Stone head. So I really like that. And it would be great to take one of the hair pieces that look like this and put on, and then you would just end up with a cool Vic Stone minifig for all the stuff in the Snyder Cut with those flashbacks. So it works really well. Uh, you can see that the intricate detailing on the torso with the kind of silver flaking in there is really, really nice. And of course, plenty of leg printing that poor old Superman, the originator of the DC superhero comics themselves, <laughs> couldn't even get. So who knows? On the back, there we have some more intricate detailing. And he includes this really unique arm that I believe was sculpted just for this. And this, which is a huge stud shooter, kind of like a buster piece, like a Mega Man's arm or something. And it actually does fire that stud. So um, in my opinion, I mean, uh, this minifig is pure art, and I think they did a terrific job. But of course, you have your Whedon Cut Cyborg here, Snyder Cut Cyborg here. <laughs> and of course, we have Diana, Wonder Woman herself, and this is a very impressive minifigure. I really, really like the extreme facial expression that we have for one of her options. You have plenty of leg printing for Wonder Woman. She comes with her sword and a very impressive shield that actually has printing on it to show kind of the eagle or bird that's on there. If we take this off, we can see that she does just have a smiling face on the other side and plenty of very impressive back printing. Oddly enough, her legs are molded in red, but I suppose that's to accommodate the boots. But I do think the flesh tone ends up being a good match for the chest and fairly decent match for the face. So this is a really terrific minifig. And the hair, if I had one complaint, maybe seems just the slightest smidge too brown or too light when I think it should lean a little bit more towards black. But I think that's probably just a matter of subjective preference. Of course, we already know about the two parademons back here and you get options about what the wings look like, but these guys, I can't say enough about how great that printing is. So that leads us to the most impressive of all when it comes to these figures. And that is this huge brick built Steppenwolf. Now. There's a big difference between brick built and big fig. If it's a big fig, we're talking about like the hulks that you get in these uh, sets. You know, they're just kind of a big chunky figure that's molded and usually only the arms move. But this is brick built. So this thing actually has all of the articulation that you could hope for. The head turns, the arms are just on a ball so you can do just about anything with them. These are also on a ball joint here at the elbow. 
There's no wrist articulation, but there is plenty of finger articulation for all three fingers. Of course, in the uh, Snyder Cut, he has a, I think he has double that amount of fingers on each hand. You get a cool brick-built version of Steppenwolf's axe, which I think is really nice. You get these legs down here. There's no waist joint, but there is plenty of ball-jointed articulation right there at the knee and at the hips. So you don't get anything at the ankles, but you do get everything else you might need. On the back, he just kind of has some funny brick parts. But what's really impressive is all of the cool printing here. Now, this is, of course, very reflective of the theatrical version. However, the great thing about LEGO is because it's so stylized, it doesn't feel too untrue to the actual Snyder Cut. So having this guy and having him kind of double as both, it really isn't out of the realm of possibility. The one thing is his big, it almost looks like he's had a uh, manicure of some sort here because they look like big red fingernails. Other than that, and the weird red panels on the sides there, uh, he really looks pretty good. And definitely a rare case of a figure like this being able to double as two different versions. I don't see much of a problem. I'm just considering this also, that Snyder Cut design. And look, just like in the Snyder Cut. <laughs> also, it's worth pointing out that you get the final of the three mother boxes here. This is the Amazonian mother box that he steals near the uh, first section of the film. That, of course, brings us to the main event of this set which is the massive flying fox vehicle. As you can see, this thing is very, very large. It's hard to get a good idea of the scale unless we place a minifigure near it. And here is Batman. And you can see that he can practically live in here as a house or a playset. The thing is really quite large. And there's all sorts of terrific details that are film accurate. Let's start with the front. You can see the Batmobile lodged inside, which we will get into in a minute, and you can see all these cool hangar details in here. Most of this isn't meant to be seen, and it's just more technic pieces and things, but I really do like it, and I think it looks cool. It's also worth noting that you get these neat trans red pieces on the front, which give kind of that weird red section. We'll go ahead and look at the top of the vehicle. You can see that we have a Bat logo and some cool sticker details, which weren't that difficult to get right, so I appreciate that. We can see that we have a couple of stud shooters here on the front, which I left the studs out of. I didn't really feel the need to include them. We also have some kind of faux guns right here, and the stud shooters are meant to simulate fire from those guns. We can see that we have the cockpit, and this leads to the first strange choice, I think, of the set, which is this is completely removable and not on a hinge. This comes off, and you're left with a very yellow cockpit. And just like the... Nightcrawler. I think that's kind of an odd choice, but it's okay. It's also interesting to note that there are two seats in this cockpit, so you could technically have two figures set side by side. On the sides here, we have some nice stickering details and a slight amount of articulation at the tip of the wing here. This kind of just flexes slightly. Moving on through, we have some vents on the side and our huge thrusters on the back. I really like the trans orange pieces here, and I think those are quite nice. Here we have some big wing pieces on the back. Really like those. And this is how it looks from the back with the Batmobile inserted. And on the other side, we have much the same detailing we saw from the other way. Now, it's interesting to note that both sides have a cool Wayne Technology sticker right there. And there it is on the other side. If I had any kind of complaint with the set, because I really do think it's a beautiful build, I would say that it is slightly odd that the final build has kind of a big hollow section at the bottom. Of course, in the movie, we know that that's not the case, that this is closed off and it looks more like a big troop carrier, which is what Bruce Wayne describes it as. However, it is a little funny that unless you have the Batmobile in, this will just be a big hollowed out hull. Uh, with the Batmobile in, it looks fairly complete and I'm surprised that it actually works as well as it does. But as you will soon see, once you take it out, that's not the case. To open it, you bring these down and these down and then you just pull the Batmobile forward. The box almost makes it look like it will launch out, so it's kind of funny. And before we look at it, I just want to show you, you have this big gaping uh, kind of hole, but it's also good because it gives you some nice playset access if you want to have the members of the league standing in there, and there is enough room for all six. Looking at the modified Batmobile itself, it is quite similar in many ways to the Dawn of Justice set that we got, and I never did get that set, so I can only go by pictures. Uh, however, the Batmobile does seem fairly similar, maybe slightly smaller, I'm not really sure. 
And this really does stand on its own as its own kind of thing, is kind of a minifig scale version of that Batmobile. So I'm really very pleased with it. I like the big monster tires. I actually do like the stud shooters on here. These can be easily removed if you like to, but I kind of, I kind of like that there. I really do like the faux cannon that we have up there. It doesn't actually launch anything out, but I think it looks really nice and fairly accurate to what they had in the film as Batman had modified the Batmobile. Some cool sticker details on the sides too that really enhance the mood of the vehicle. I really like the shields or whatever you want to call them up here that gives kind of Batman's uh, tail fins. You can see that we have kind of like a little grapnel gun on the side there for extra detailing. So, can the cockpit open? Yes, it can. As a matter of fact, it actually does hinge open. And we have this little area on the inside. More of those strange red stickers like we saw in Batman's Nightcrawler vehicle. But overall, the minifig fits in there just fine. And you have a beautiful Batmobile. Just for scale purposes, I will put Batman alongside of it. And you can see that it is the perfect scale here with the minifig. However, it is kind of funny to see this almost be in the correct scale but truthfully this would probably the flying fox if you really wanted it to be in like true scale to the film it it would probably need to be like 30 percent bigger but still i i think it looks pretty cool if i were one of the lego designers who had worked on the justice league mini theme from 2017 with the three sets i couldn't help but feel quite a sense of pride at everything they accomplished the 2017 DC Superheroes Justice League theme from LEGO has to be one of their best mini themes. It does a great job of encapsulating everything that was iconic about this film. In three sets, they managed to do every major vehicle, of course the bat vehicles that we see in the film, and at least one of the major locations. They were also able to get together all three MacGuffins from the film which makes it even more interesting to collect all three of the sets. With the incredible build quality of the vehicles, and at least a neat kind of army buildable set at the $20 price point, this is something that most major releases could only hope for or dream of. With, I remember a lot of the major Marvel Studios films getting some miniature themes similar to this, like Avengers Age of Ultron, and some of the other Avengers films around the same time but none of those themes ever did as good a job at encapsulating the main story beats of the film or giving us all of the majorly iconic builds or vehicles or whatever you want to say from those movies. If there were anything that I wish would have been capitalized on slightly more, it would have been the idea of perhaps doing maybe some sort of version of the Batcave from Batman v Superman and Justice League. I think this would have been great, even if it could have only been, say, a $50 or $60 build where maybe you built Batman's console that he sets at in the movie, or maybe just like a table for the League to gather around along with it, maybe a platform or two. I think that would have been a really cool opportunity. But as it stands, I really do think that there isn't too much else they could have done to have capitalized on all of the iconic aspects of the film. Especially now that we have the Snyder Cut, we're able to see exactly what the filmmaker's intent was, and this is definitely a theme that you should go back and get for yourself, if for nothing else, to relive some of your favorite moments from that movie. Overall, it would have cost exactly $200 to have completed all three sets in the theme, and for $200 less than a single hot toy, you would have had a terrific toyetic representation of the film. Of course, don't forget that there will be one final chapter for the Justice League Toy Retrospectacular videos, and that'll be our fourth chapter having to do with the adult aimed collector's lines. This would be your premium lines that were sold in more specialty stores and online. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. If you think we deserve it, go ahead and give us a like and please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that fourth chapter and many other cool toy videos that we have coming to you very soon. Guys, as always, God bless each and every one of you. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. Fanboy out. And look, just like in the Snyder Cut,